Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Builder and in this video I will show you how to design basement wall. So basically basement wall is constructed in order to retain the earth and to prevent moisture from seeping into the building. Since the basement wall is supported by the mat foundation in general case, so the stability is ensured and the design of basement wall is limited to the safe design of the vertical steam. In this case, this is for a retaining wall that has a smaller slab in comparison with the mat footing of the building. So in such cases, stability has to be checked. But in our case, that is for the building, we will be providing basement wall throughout and it is resting on the mat. So the stability is not a concern. The basement wall must resist the lateral earth pressure as well as the additional pressure due to other type of loading. Here you can see in the diagram. So this triangular portion is the active earth pressure and this rectangular is due to the sursa. So we will consider these two cases for the design. Here the basement wall carry lateral earth pressure generally as the vertical slabs supported by floor framing at the basement level and upper floor level. The basement wall acts as a vertical slab supported by the horizontal floor framing. If we are going to provide a basement wall then we can clearly see that it is being supported by the horizontal floor framing at either side. However, keeping in mind that during the early construction stage, the upper floor has not been finished. Hence, the wall will be designed as a cantilever to be in the safe side. So, the design of the basement wall is considered as a cantilever wall with the fixity provided at the mat foundation. So, I have prepared an excel sheet for this. So, I hope you have seen the video regarding this model. So, for this, the consideration of the grade of concrete was M35 and as the wall is monolithically casted with the column, so the grade will be kept as same. So grade of concrete M35, grade of steel Fe500, modulus of elasticity 2 into 10 to the power 5 MPa for mild steel. And for the swell, unit weight of swell, this is the saturated swell. So to be in the safe side, let us consider unit weight of saturated swell which is 19 kN per meter cube. Angle of internal friction, this depends upon the type of swell, either that is fine sand, silt, clay, etc. So now let us provide this at 30 degree. Sursa's load due to the vehicular movement. So this will also depend on the grade of or class of vehicle that is type A, type B. And according to that the load is different. For example for type A it is 10, for type B it is 20. So for now let, let us keep this as 20. Lateral earth pressure coefficient at active condition. So Ka 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi. And for Excel we have to keep this as radians. 1 minus sine 30 by 1 plus sine 30. So this comes as 0 0.33. So this is the material property. Now let us give the basement wall data. So height of basement wall. So the basement wall will be provided from this point to this point and it is 4.05 and with the basement wall. So we are considering per unit with design approach. So 1000 mm clear cover for the rebar as it is subjected to swell. So for surface exposed to soil or water, it is generally provided as 50. Effective cover. So this is equal to clear cover plus diameter of shear bar plus diameter of main bar. Diameter of shear bar basically means horizontal bar. Diameter of shear bar generally means uh, the horizontal bar. So considering 50 mm as clear cover and the vertical bar that is the main bar as for now let us provide this as 20 mm and Horizontal bar as 12 mm, which is generally a temperature enforcement. So, this divided by 2, this comes as 72 mm. Now, load calculation. We have two types of loading. One is the triangular, another is rectangular. And for the rectangular loading, which is P1 for now, considering this as factor load due to surcharge, is equal to Ka times Q or we have this as W for now. Ka into W into H. So 1.5 times 0 0.33. This is Ka into W 20 into height. That is 4.05. So this comes as 41 kN per meter. Similarly, factor load due to soil pressure as it is a triangular. So 1 by 2 into Ka into gamma that is saturated unit weight and H square. So basically the value at base is Ka into gamma into H and considering the height, the overall force comes as Ka gamma H square by 2. 
So this comes as 78 kilonewton per meter. So as we are considering the construction phase only, so we are not considering the earthquake. Hence, the significance of the cell point of the structure becomes zero. So we are just designing the wall considering the surcharge and swell pressure. However, if the structure was cantilevered throughout its lifetime, then we might have to consider or we will consider the seismic weight of the structure and in that case, the self weight of the structure becomes very much critical for designing the ultimate moment. Now for the flexural design of the basement wall, we will compute the size of the steam required. So ultimate moment is equal to moment due to the triangular force plus moment due to the rectangular force. So for the triangular, it is basically P2 into S by 3, considering this as the base. So the center lies at a distance S by 3. Similarly, for the rectangular, it will be at the center that is S by 2. So P1 into S by 2 plus P2 into S by 3. And this comes as 187.19 kN meter. For Fe 500, bending moment, we can use this formula that is 0.133 FCK BD square. And for Fe 415, it is 0.138. So this is also from IS code. On solving this equation, that is BM is equal to 187.19 into 10 to the power 6 divided by FCK as 35, B as 1000, the square root of this value comes as 201 mm. And providing, this is the effective depth, so providing overall depth 201 plus effective cover that is 72 and taking value that is multiple of 25, we get this as 275 mm. And the effective depth will be 275 minus effective clear cover. So this comes as 203 mm. Now we have to compute the limiting moment in order to compare as the section is singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. So the limiting moment comes as 93.14 kN meter considering this formula which is as per clause G that is NX G 1.1 C from IS456. So 0 0.36 FCK B into XU max and x u max is nothing but 0.46 d. This is the limiting depth of neutral axis. So substitute the value, you will get the moment as 193.14 kN meter. So here you can see that the limiting moment and the ultimate moment is almost equal. So it is better to provide a greater size. So for now, let us provide this as for which I can just put this as 50. So 300 mm. So the limiting moment comes as 243, which is better now. Okay. Now we can compute the depth of neutral axis. Ultimate moment will compute the actual depth of neutral axis and check whether the section is under reinforced, over reinforced or balanced section. So using this moment in this formula, we can compute the value of x u. And this will be our quadratic equation. We have to solve that. And this value comes as 76 mm. And here you can see that the depth of neutral axis is less than that of the limiting depth of neutral axis. So the section is designed as under reinforced. With this conclusion that is under reinforced section, we can compute the reinforcement. So calculation of main reinforcement using this equation, we can compute the area of steel required or you can use the equation from annex G clause 1.1 B. Substitute the value of MU as 187.19 and FY as 500, D as 228, XU as 76. The reinforcement required is 2189 mm square. Now minimum area of reinforcement. So this is from the IS code as well. This is the area of steel required. Now we'll compare with the minimum reinforcement required. So it is 0.12% of the gross area which comes as 360 mm square. And being a flexural element, the minimum area of flexural reinforcement shall be considered which is 0.85 into BD by FY. Substitute all the value here and you get 510 mm square. Now let us compare this three value. We see that the minimum area required is 2189 mm square. Now let us compute the bar size and the spacing required. Considering diameter of bar. So the diameter of bar shall not be greater than D by 8. So D being 228 here. So D by 8, this comes as 38 mm. So the value or the diameter of the bar shall be less than 38. Let us use 20 mm bar. And the spacing required, which is basically equal to width of the section divided by area of reinforce required into area of the bar provided. So this comes as 143 mm spacing provided. So the spacing shall be provided less than this. So now let us provide 125 mm. 
then area of steel provided is equal to width of section divided by spacing provided into area of the rebar provided. So this comes as 2513 mm square and the maximum area of reinforcement provided shall be less than 0.04 BD. So this is also from IS code. So this is the maximum area of tension steel that is 12,000 mm square for this section. But now we are providing just 2513 that is okay. So calculation of the main reinforcement is done. Now let us check for the horizontal reinforcement. So basically the horizontal reinforcement is provided as a temperature reinforcement. Uh, let us provide a bar size of dia 12 mm when the area of that river is 113 mm square. Area of reinforcement so 0.12% of BD shall be sufficient so, and that comes as 360 mm square spacing required 314 mm considering this 360 that is 1000 divided by 360 into 113 spacing provided 150 mm area provided 754 mm square and tensile rebar provided percentage will be 0.25 percent so basically this is 754 divided by gross area into 100 so it is also okay and similarly check for shear Shear force as a critical section. So at the base, we'll check, and this is equal to lateral force, which is 41 and 78. So this will sum the shear force at the base, or you can also check the shear force at a distance d from the base because the critical section for shear is at distance d from the base. So the length here we are considering as 4.05. This will be 4.05 minus 0.228 but for now I am just considering the overall height so this comes as 118 kN for checking the shear strength of concrete percentage of tensile reinforcement is required so percentage of tensile reinforcement provided is nothing but 25813 divided by overall that is the gross area into 100 so this comes as 0.84 percent and from table 19 you can compute the shear strength of the concrete that is for this percentage and grade of concrete as M35 but I have used a formula from SP16 so I have used this formula for computing the shear strength of the concrete you can also compute that from IS 456 2000 table 19 by interpolating the value for 0.84 percentage and M35 grade concrete so from this formula you can directly compute this and this comes at 0.62 Newton per mm square and shear strength at the critical section this is equal to shear strength of concrete into gross area divided by 1000 that is converting into kilonewton as this value is in newton so this comes as 186 kilonewton which is greater than that of the shear force at the critical section so the section is safe for shear so in this way the basement wall is designed manually i hope this video helped you if it helped do like and comment in the video and subscribe our channel and share it with your friends Thank you.